Alright. Hi everybody, this is Joshua Kirk back with you once again on YouTube. And now, as I promised, I'm gonna do episode 14 of Album of the Day. And sorry I haven't done any videos in a while because I sort of needed a break from doing YouTube videos. And also because I was working on a podcast and a website. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. Uh, it's called jkmusicreviews.com. Um, there's going to be a lot of cool stuff on there. Like, like for example, I just started a new podcast. So, so you guys can go check that out. And um, also recently, uh, I, I just recently created a new Twitter account. Haven't tweeted much yet, but I know I will soon. Um, and uh, and I just wanted to tell you at the beginning of the video that I have a couple new posters here. Um, one is for um, Jukebox the Ghost. Um, I saw him live at Auto Bar in Baltimore, Maryland. I also met the band. And they were great. Also have a uh, Poster for the new Local Natives album, Hummingbird, which hopefully I will talk about soon. And uh, another reason I haven't been doing much YouTube videos lately is because for one week I've been suffering from a cold. So so finally I'm feeling better and it's fresh. Uh, and now it's time to go back to reviewing here on this channel. So today's artist is um, a singer-songwriter from... Uh, I believe he's from uh, Nashville, Tennessee, or something like that. Um, he's uh, the uh, son of singer-songwriter Steve Earle, who's a pretty uh, famous guy. Um, his name is Justin Towns Earle. He's been making music for like a. He's been making music for well over a decade, I guess. Um, it. Uh, so, and uh, the word Towns in his name uh, actually comes from uh, one of Steve Earle's favorite artists, Towns Van Zant. So today I'm going to be uh, talking about his uh, his uh, fourth album. Uh, the album is called Harlem River Blues. Uh, this one was released on September 13th, 2010 on Bloodshot Records which is like a Chicago record company. And I'll also mention that this is my first time reviewing a country and Americana album here on Album of the Day. Um, anyway, here's the cover. There he is right there. And, and next to him looks like uh, this little model or something like that. I think it's what it is. It's credited in the album. Spine. The other spine. And the back of the album. Songs on here are the title track, Harlem River Blues, One More Night in Brooklyn, Move Over Mama, Working for the MTA, Wandering, Slippin' and Slidin', Christ Church Woman, Learning to Cry, I Ain't Waitin', Rogers Park, and the Harlem River Blues reprise. And uh, this was produced by Justin himself, along with Skylar Wilson, who's been producing his albums pretty much since 2008's The Good Life, even though that isn't uh, Justin Towns Earl's first record. In fact, his first album was an EP released in 2007 called Yuma. Inside of here, there's uh, some footage of from the studio. There's like Justin Towns Earl a little bit here. And then there's some of the musicians on here. And then, like, um, there's, like, a Justin Shoes right there. And, and uh, there's the CD itself in here. Um, and, uh, underneath it, there's, like, more credits, things, um, and then, um, and then right here, basically all the, this is all uh, the personnel for all the songs, actually, which is really cool, because 
Dustin Towns Earl has some really good musicians on here, such as um, Jason Isbell, who plays guitar throughout the album. He used to be in Drive By Truckers. Uh, there's Skylar Wilson producing it uh, once again. Um, and then uh, there's uh, and there's actually a couple of guest appearances from Ket Sekor of the Old Crow Medicine Show plays harmonica on a few tracks. Okay, that's the packaging. Now I'm going to talk about the songs now. So the first track, of course, is the title track, Harlem River Blues, and it um, starts out with basically an electric guitar, an upright bass, and an organ accompanying, that, accompanying it along with a, some snare drum or something like that. Um, then, of course, there's Justin Towns Earl's voice, and you can tell it's him once you hear his voice. Because it's very distinctive, uh, distinctive, and uh, and it's sort of a song that you just want to just clap your hands and sing along to. Um, in fact, there's actually a gospel choir on here, which really fits the song perfectly. Because you can see that Justin Towns Earl is really having fun in the studio, and I like how he's not afraid to use the gospel choir. Uh, One more night in Brooklyn. Um, it's sort of a song about, like, how, uh, sometimes, uh, uh, where you actually live in, where you've been, where you've been born, or whatever, sometimes isn't really, uh, the greatest place for you to live your whole life, so you just sort of try to move on and try to, you know, uh, think about, think about, uh, your life a little more. Um, that's, that's another one of my... That's another one of the highlights on this album, and he uses some really unique things in here, along with the guitar, the bass, and the drums. He's got a lot of unique stuff, like here you've got like some string arrangements, and uh, you've also got a vibraphone on here, uh, which is really cool. Um, cool. Uh, like Justin Towns Earl, like uh, he is a pretty popular Americana artist, and Overall, this is pretty much his most successful album to date. Um, date, and I can see why the critics have, of course, have been getting rave reviews about this. Move Over Mama has a bit more of a bluesy feel to it. Um, it actually kind of sounds like something that maybe could have been on an old-school Elvis Presley record. Like, if Elvis were still alive, I think he would have appreciated this song, because... It's a really cool, fun song, um, song, uh, with, uh, and it's got sort of that, it's definitely got that old, uh, 50s, uh, country vibe to it, uh, with, uh, the, with the, with the acoustic and electric guitars, the upright bass, and, uh, bright bass, uh, or a Fender Rhodes piano is used on here, too, um, too, and, uh, and uh, Justin Towns are all sort of bluesy, uh, echoing voice. Wing voice. Um, it's, uh, it's really, uh, it's really cleverly done, and uh, this definitely sounds like it could have been a great song on a Elvis Presley record. You could either say the song is too short or mushed together, but to be honest, I really like the song despite its short length. So, uh, as got a nice groove to it, so, so I love that song. Uh, working for the MTA, sort of a more mellow song about, like, working on the railroad, like Justin Towns Earl. What I love about him is that he writes in character a lot, in a lot of very interesting ways, and he sort of makes up this character who's the, uh, son of a railroad man, um, who's been helping his father out on the railroad for, like, a while, pretty much his whole life, life, like, his childhood up until this point, um, this point, so it's a really interesting story about all that stuff. Uh, Wandering is another great song, um, uh, like, uh, this actually sounds like, uh, the great American string band from, like, the 50s and the 60s, back when, uh, country music was mostly a more stripped-down sound with, like, uh, acoustic guitars, harmonicas, fiddles, and stuff like that. 
like that. So this has got all the in here. Like I could totally hear a 1960s bluegrass band or something like that uh, playing with the song and making it sound great. Um, making it sound great. Uh, so um, so it's just another really fun song. Uh, song. So it's another one of the highlights. Um, I really love the uh, slow jazz groove on um, on the song "Slipping and Sliding." I thought that was a really nice, relaxing groove. Uh, like, uh, and the video for it is. And I also like the video for it too. Like, the video for it is uh, beautifully shot. Like, uh, the song is uh, pretty, and the song is pretty. Emotional and pretty, uh, and pretty, uh, and pretty, uh, straightforward and laid back. So the video is sort of like that, too. Like some footage of like Justin Towns Earl. He's like on, he's like on the subway train, uh, and like, um, uh, driving around in the streets. Uh, so the song is pretty straightforward and not boring or anything like that. Just very. It's nice, like, uh, he's sort of going back to the basics on this one. One has really nice horn section on it. Section on it. and s Section on it, too. And uh, this organ accompanying the electric guitar groove on it. It's all really well fit together. There, and it really works on this song. Uh, Christchurch Woman um, is... Um, Another great one, uh, one, uh, I like how, uh, I really like the song a lot, because I like how the song sort of shows that Justin Towns Earl has really great songwriting, sort of coming from a personal perspective, um, but also that he sort of makes, uh, some, but he also makes some pretty interesting imagery once, uh, you listen to the lyrics, like, you know, Music may be a pretty important part, but also the lyrics may be pretty important to listen to on here as well, so. Listen to as well. Uh, so, uh, the song really sort of shows that, and, um, that, and once again, of course, there's the horn section, which was, which I thought was a really nice touch. I like the fact that uh, the horn section on this album is actually used on a couple of tracks and not too overused or anything like that. That, that, like, it's sort of like, he's trying to make it sound interesting, but not overuse any instruments. That's what I really like about this album. Then, of course, there's the melancholy ballad called, um, Learning the Cry, um, which is, um, I could swear that this is probably a prequel to a song off of the album before this, Midnight Eve Movies, released in 2009, called, uh, Walk On, uh, which is sort of about, like, you know, uh, just being better off, uh, lonely than, uh, than, like, hanging out with this lady, and then, uh, the character sort of, you know, just sort of learning that, uh, sometimes, uh, times you may just be better off with, uh, someone by your side than just uh, being lonely all the time. So, I mean, it's a beautifully done song with, uh, and it's got a pedal steel guitar on it, which really fits in, because it has sort of that lonely wasteland type feel that I think really fits in the track. Uh, Eight Waiting is another fun track, um, track. I like how, I love this song, uh, one of the reasons, uh, this song is one of my favorites, because it has uh, Kit Secor from Old Crow Medicine Show on it, this amazing harmonica player, and he really just cranks it on the harmonica on this one. Harmonica on this one. It starts out slow, basically an acoustic guitar and a harmonica, and then eventually it starts to build up, and it's just, uh, it's just a fun song to just, you know, groove out to. Groove out to, and it actually sounds like a, it actually sounds like, uh, late 80s blues music or something like that. Towards the end of the album, there's a song called Rogers Park, um, which is a beautiful piano ballad, um, ballad on here, um, on here. 
And uh, and this song um is uh, sort of another song about you know just you know forgetting about stuff that you've sort of gone through in the past and just sort of moving on and uh, just uh moving on just really thinking about your life a little more um a little more so uh, the songs on here are like just beautifully written um it's uh, beautifully written since uh. Sort of resonate with you and sort of come from like, I, th I think most of these songs definitely come from uh, a, a personal perspective uh, in Justin Towns Earl's life. I think a lot of the songs really are inspired by sort of that uh, songwriting theme. Uh, theme and like I think this album will really resonate with people even even. I think this album will even appeal to people that aren't typical country music fans. And it uh, closes with the Harlem River Blues reprise, which is basically um, the chorus, basically just the chorus of Harlem River Blues done with like a reprise rise on here, uh, so it's not really any much anything special on here. But overall, I think this album is definitely Justin Towns Earl's best, probably it's topped for my favorite album of his um, after 2009's Midnight of the Movies since I've pretty much been listening to that album as much as this one. So, um, so my favorite track on here um, would have to be uh, this would have to be a uh, the song uh, Slippin' and Slidin'. Um, some other favorites on here um, favorites on here uh, Move Over Mama. Uh, 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 working for the MTA, uh, uh, Wandering, uh, Harlem River Blues, One Night in Brooklyn, uh, let me take a look at other songs, see what other ones I like, um, uh, I like, uh, I Ain't, I Ain't Waiting, and, uh, Rogers Park pretty much round out my favorites. Overall, I think this album's really good. I give this one an 8.5 out of 10, um, 0.5 out of 10, uh, literally, like, uh, this is a great album, and I think, uh, that this is definitely one of the most, definitely one of the most beautifully done Americana, uh, records of, uh, 2010, so, so now that's gonna wrap it up for, um, episode 14 of, Al of Album of the Day, and hopefully, all of you will stay tuned for uh, episode 5. So, see you later, guys.